the day is, is dedicated to the care of the earth, so I thought this would be an appropriate prayer. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it. That we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey toward your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Amen. Are there any additions to the agenda? Yes, there's two. Now, um, A, expenditures which were over purchasing limits under city clerk, and B, sewer ponds under administration or the mark. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Yeah, I'd like to add down you know, on the city clerk on the procedure for code violation letters. I'd like to also have uh, we'll talk a little bit about some zoning people. Be mine. <laughs> uh, I noticed in last week's paper that Mr. Simates had questions about the trash service and, uh, and was concerned that there were a lot of complaints. And to my knowledge, I came here to the city and got them. There are two. One of them was last August and we rectified it immediately. There's some stuff dumped on the guys let fall out of the truck and, didn't, and I guess didn't notice it. And the other is, uh, is Mrs. Taylor. And that's my fault. Uh, the first time she had an issue, uh, it, it was really wet. And they have a good drive, but it's not made to take, you know, a 36,000 pound truck. So I told my guys to wait till Friday to tell when the water settled in. And then there was another one, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, a week or a couple weeks later. The guys went by there and there was a funeral. Uh, the truck is a little bit noisy. There were people gathering out in the, out in the uh, parking lot of the church over there. And, uh, and they went on, finished their route, and came back and got her. But in the, in the interim, she had called in a complaint. Uh, but now, if there's, if there's anyone at fault, it's myself, because I should have called her and let her know what was going on. And then there was, there was a lady who, uh, <laughs> and we don't mean to do this, but uh, if, if we forget, if, if we don't pay attention to what we're doing, uh, we'll, we will pack the truck right, almost right beside her bedroom window pretty early in the morning. We don't mean to do it. It's just guys forget sometimes. And and we have promised. I hope we I hope we can keep that promise that we'll never do it again. I had a I had a, a complaint about uh, no I don't know whether it's a complaint or not, but I had a lady contact me that the front tire of the trash truck had drove up on her newly planted yard, and she was very unhappy. 
And I told her at that time, I said, well, I said, I can't, I can't rectify it unless I know where it's at. I, I said, you need to probably talk to the, to the trash company. I said, I, I can't really do anything about it. There are and a couple was, of real difficult turns. It was an alley uh, in town. I went down and looked at it. And uh, the second one was uh, uh, that I had was about two weeks ago, got called a week ago. I don't know what it was. And about the muffler on one of the trucks. I don't know. Is there a Wait, muffler what? going on one? Or? No. Uh, no, it's that truck is, I don't know which one they're probably talking about. That truck has always been pretty loud ever since day one. Did you, uh, did you get the one that I heard somebody say something about smoking? I asked Pat about it, and he said uh, well, nothing what, wrong what, with it or something. What, what, what that was was uh, over at Stafford. Somebody took a picture of him taking off with the truck. Now, in that first gear uh, on automatic, it, 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 they, they, every one of them would do that. But this one's doing well. I, mean, I didn't know it. But, uh, I think it's got turbo down there. My no, we changed an air filter. That it's got two air filters, and uh, and the last time they went through it, somebody forgot to put the to change the bottom one. It was plug tight, and, uh, and so the turbos got nowhere to operate with. So we changed. It. I looked it over. We changed that out. But if but if anyone gets complaints, there's not a thing we can do to rectify them unless we know about them. You know. If somebody complains to you, uh, get a hold of us. How many you know, complaints was there that you got? There was five. It was five. Do you have them? Yeah, actually, that's what we gave actually, you. did those, you go through them? Yes, I did. Okay. One of those is a is a uh, is a question about service, like what we can pick up. And uh, actually, I have them all right here. I can't remember what they meant. Uh, there was one. There was one from. Uh, yeah. Let me. And I can tell you how to now. Okay. Uh, there was a complaint from. Uh, oh man, I, I have trouble remembering. How old are you, Terry? Uh, <laughs> I'll be 68. <laughs> first of October. Uh, from Leah Crispin, and uh, she had her dumpster in place where it was impossible to stay off the grass to get to. We, we did our damnedest, and, and finally, uh, she came down here and made a complaint. And, uh, and I think Vicky called me, and uh, what I actually did was I went over and, and they, they shared the dumpster with the folks across the alley. And uh, I went over and moved it across the alley where we could get to it without having to, to be on there. And she came down and canceled that complaint. She actually had two up written down, but, but uh, she came down and canceled that. Uh, the only, you know, the, the real legitimate complaint was that one from a year ago when the guys let the stuff fall on the ground. And, and I mean, this is my from my point of view, anyway. And Rita Taylor had legitimate complaints. Uh, actually, when we first started servicing the Taylor folks, uh, it was Don wanted it every other week. And we did that for a while, but I think maybe, uh, I think maybe he might not have told Rita. Any, anyway, anyway, uh, we do it weekly now, you know. It, it, it's just a matter of doing what they ask. But and we don't and Robbie, we told him too that when we get these written complaints, they're going to be faxed right over to Terry. That we're not yeah. going to call him anymore. We're going to fax it in writing, and he's going to have to fax back to us how he corrected. But well, but if, if you get a complaint and you call in here, they'll write it down for me, and they'll send it out there, and I'll know about it, and I'll keep it on file. Because uh, because the, the reason I want to keep it on file is because I want my people. To know what they're doing. If you happen to <clears throat> see Mary Bieber, do you mind? We've already we've already talked to Mary. Talked yeah, to yeah. She uh, 
and I tell you what, half a dozen times over the past 15 or 16 years, somebody or other has gone off off the alley into her grass there on the south side of the, of the alley. And, uh, and I never have. I don't, I don't quite understand why the other guys do. It's, it's, it's accidental, you know. It's, it's, uh, I think they probably don't come from far enough across the street. Because the trucks take a wide turn. Can I ask you a question, Terry? Sure. It seems like the, the guys that you have working for you now are just picking the trash sacks up out of the trash bins. They're not actually dumping the trash bins into the pickup. Is they're there a reason to look for at, that? They're supposed to look in there, and if there's, I mean, if there's two or three pieces of paper, you're not expecting to pick it up. But if there's a layer, one, they're supposed to pick it up and dump that out. And, it doesn't seem like ours If it's, if it's six, they're way. supposed to pump it on the bottom and make it come out. And a lot of times our trash cans are along the curb. They're not up on our yard when we come up in the middle of the afternoon. And um, I know the wind blows, but well, I, you know, I mean, I, I quit buying trash cans with wheels because it kept slamming them down. Yeah, and it's trash cans, ice and breaking them. Trash cans are and they're wheels. expensive. And, and any plastic trash can with wheels or not, <coughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful thing as long as it's full. As soon as it's empty, it's the, the, the world has it. The wind has it. Right. And. Uh, I'm not sure there's quite anything you can do about it. We anymore. We just we lay them down. Sometimes we turn them over and, and we put the lids beside them because well yeah, but, but, the, but the lids get lost. Yeah. If we, you know if, if we put them back on the can that tips over, the lid would be somewhere other than where it should. Right. I went through Nashville the other day after Nashville had picked up and it was like an obstacle course between all those big. getting just two credit cards for the city. The bank requires that a name has to be put on those credit cards. So what um, I'm recommending is to get one for the city clerk, the police de uh, department, the city superintendent, and the electrical department. Um, I would probably set the minimum that they could spend as their approving amount. So like for mine would be 500, Jeff, please. Yeah, the maximum for it to be what we're already approved to purchase at, which would be, like Jess would be 2,000, mine would be 500 on there. Um, I put in there an updated version of the credit card policy. There was a couple of typos, so I gave you a, an extra copy today with it corrected. I would recommend that if we do the credit cards that each person that gets one has to come in and sign that policy. It just pretty much states what they can spend it on, what they can't spend it on. What, um, if they require a late fee, then they don't get the credit card anymore. What, uh, is everybody else's 
I mean, that's up to, to you guys. I mean, they cover all the parking. Yeah. Yeah, we can get. I don't know how much you spend, but if you needed to, you to get something, you could come in and use Madonna's or you know, that would be good. Yeah, they could. Yeah, they they could. The only time you would have trouble with it is if they went somewhere like to a hotel and someone actually saw wanted to the see the signature. Um, a lot of those you could prepay with the credit card before the person left. But they could still take it to swipe it as long as you know you don't just sign for anything. Mm -hmm. It should be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need a motion on that. So mm -hmm. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Is, um, is, is this uh, are you sure this is what we ought to do? We've done we had this in play this is about, uh, about six or seven years ago. Anymore, everything you order offline or over the phone has to be paid with a credit card. Because I know that the fire department tried to order stuff here, and I think Mike ended up paying for it out of his own pocket because the only way they take payment is credit card. I do that now. Yeah. There's a couple times a month. I think it's one of the things that there's no way around it. They don't like setting up four or five different accounts <coughs> once a year purchases or twice a year purchases. And I, I, I personally feel like it's kind of ridiculous that we ask for our employees to pay for their meals and their oh, lodging yeah, I'm, I'm when they're more, traveling and be reimbursed. I wouldn't go there with that. But I mean, but that's I what's happening I do think they all now. need to sign this and they are liable for that card. I mean, if there's something that's not, that's charged on them, that's not right, then they're liable for it. And I'm pretty sure it states that right there. So I do think they all need to have it signed and probably notarized. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for it. The, the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was at the last meeting, we had the two non-hires. And so I just wanted to kind of bring you guys up to date on how, we, how the office handled that. Um, Ruben had promised them $9 an hour. So he was kind of acting as a city agent. So that's what we ended up paying them was $9 an hour. Their pay period was from August 11th to August 18th, pretty much. Okay. Um, the next one is John has created a code violation letter, which I believe I gave you guys a, a copy, like a generic one, for us to use. We, we have sent that out to two, two people. The, the first one has until September 5th to get it to get it corrected. Yep, I sure can. Um, the other one has um, it was actually sent to someone that was deceased, so we're waiting for it to come back, and then we have to give 10 days from there because that's who the landlord owner is. When when they get ready to send out the the junk vehicles letters, this is where I kind of need some guidance because there is no impound lot in the Stafford County doesn't have one. So where exactly do you guys want to put them? Do you just want to take them to court? That's So that's why I haven't sent out the other ones because I just didn't know what to do with them when they didn't get ready. That kind of follows in what I was going to say because I know from being on the zoning board it's it's supposed to go to, you're going to have to secure them in an impound lot, yeah. and we don't have one, and I don't. What is the lot out there, though? That That's I don't know. Owned. It's county, and, and I checked with Nita today, and she said it's not the impound, they don't have one. They, the county done away with their impound lot. They no longer have one that's it's on the wrecking service to impound vehicles, and so there's not one in Stafford County. Now some of some of the other cities that don't have impound, they just put it in a place that, like a fenced-in area that the city owns, and make sure that you can walk in. Some say they just take them to court. I think the problem you're going to find out is you'll have it filled up in a month, and then what do you do? Sit on it for ten years, five years, 
you're going to have more investment in it. Maybe. I don't know if uh, zoning. I don't know. Well, what you're talking about is like an abatement where they don't clean it up, so the city goes and tries to clean it up. The other way of handling, and you can almost do both at the same time, uh, is to take them through municipal court and get them monetary judgments, and then try to collect that monetary judgment by having somebody come in and having the court order the sale of the stores, pay off the monetary judgment, and have somebody come in. I think the problem is, is when they redone the zoning regulations, all them people were grandfathered in on the old rules. It, this isn't this isn't a zoning ordinance. It's, it's environmental law. It's, it's a city code. So, so they, it, it's kind of like keeping trash in here. It's the same. Because that was the problem last time. The city came up against all the vehicles because it was zoning. It wasn't. Kind of the rule of thumb is if it doesn't fit with the neighborhood, then you probably buy that city. So if you have one house in the neighborhood that has a bunch of cars in the yard, it probably doesn't fit with the neighborhood. Maybe this is a silly question, but are the cars there because the owners don't have the means or the ability to do something about them in most cases, or are they there because the owner doesn't want to turn loose of it because it's a vehicle, but it doesn't work anymore? I mean, what are we, what are we dealing with? Like a little bit of all of it. Do we have a regulation for St. John that says you could only have so many vehicles in your yard and they have to be tagged and updated? That every vehicle has to have the current registration on it. So if they don't, then it's to the chief of police to find them, or what? It's, yeah, I mean, we that's pretty much it. it just all the code said was that it has to be a current registration. If it doesn't have a current registration, then it could be classified as junked or, but or something else. One problem you're going to face is one of the people in this town has a dealer's license. All he has to do is put that tag on there, and it's current. But it doesn't have to be able to run. Say that. You're, you're talking about the, the, the judge is actually going to decide, takes right. them in court, what is their judge car or not, based on the regulations. Right. Right. You know, judge car to judge car, you start to get in some, some areas that people start to almost run a junkyard in their own yard, which is prohibited by the city so, if, would we be able to do something like, for example, notify all these people, set one week court date, and basically set one date and roll everything through that single date, and make arrangements for a car crusher to come in once it was all done, and get rid of the junk vehicles? The, the, uh, the municipal court judge and I are pretty good at, he doesn't make me come in town if there's nothing going on. So we could roll through. I don't know, four four thirty or four. I think it's at four. Um, whether we get done in like one hour, or I don't know what your contract is at the end, but it would say anything. And really, most of those things, people will show up for first appearances and they'll plead guilty to it and they'll find them. I don't need to be there for that. It's only when somebody's contesting it in a trial that they end that. Which is why I think I've made one court appearance in this court. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is there a way that we can actually deal with the problem as opposed to putting something in an impound lot? I mean, is there a way that we can notify these people, let them know that if it's not off the property by X amount of time, that it will be subject to removal by the city? and It'll be crushed. No, that's the abatement process, and that's what we have to put it in storage. It's going to cost us a ton of money. Yeah. It's, it's, what what it's the same process if you find the house is dilapidated and, 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 and the landowner won't clean it up, and the only option is to go in there and clean it up.
sometimes if there are people that are willing to buy those types of cars, the city can kind of work as a connector. Usually people have junk because they don't have the means to take care of it. If somebody comes by on the door and says, I'll buy that for five hundred bucks, and it takes care of the city's problem too. Yes, if you send out letters tell them if they don't want them to want them hauled off, we'll find someone to come take them up for them. Help them out. I mean, if they're just sitting there and they ain't ever going to use them, maybe that's all they need. They ain't got a means to get rid of them. Yeah, right. Maybe that person's problem became a salvage title and stuff, but they can probably do all the paperwork and have it signed in there. I mean, it's worth a try at least helping get some of them cleaned up. I just don't want to see city spend a lot of time, staff time, and a lot of expense with work costs and whatever, if there's nothing we can do when it's all said and done. Well, I, that's where I was trying to go, and I think years ago, they had somebody, I don't know what they labeled that person, but somebody that followed up, if you had something out of compliance, they followed up to make sure it was took care of, and I think Mel had done that job. <coughs> Do we need to try to appoint somebody to be a, what do I want to say, I think the word terminology is a zoning deputy or a it's code enforcement. Code enforcement. It's code. This is, uh, yeah, she was what was her name? Trish uh, Palmer. Trish Palmer. Yeah. Trish and uh, I think there's some people, I had one lady that mentioned with me today about Maybe she might be interested in getting involved in something that happened. And she works on one of the banks. But it, who do who uh, who has to do that? The zoning or the city council? I would say no, that's I think it was the zoning administrator as one that the yeah. city superintendent was the one that enforced all the zoning regulations. But again, this isn't this isn't a zoning issue. The, the zoning ordinances, the city doesn't have to have zoning ordinances. The environmental issues are Environmental codes are mirrored after environmental statutes. And under the environmental statutes, there is a mechanism for appointing a code enforcement and, and, and somebody would send out a letter, follow up on that letter, and then when a case has gotten to the point where they're not doing anything, recommend it to me for prosecution. So this has nothing to do with zoning. This, is, this, is, this is absolutely nothing to do with zoning. So we can take care of this. City office. In the city office, and, and 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 really, you guys have the discretion how hard you want to do it. Sometimes it's better to go through a period of strict code enforcement, and, and usually people learn by example. Um, kind of like what the mayor said, you stack it all at once. You, know, you emphasize a couple people, a couple cases, more egregious ones, and then people start to realize you're taking it serious. Well, we've had cases that have. They can be appealed to the district court and to deal with these types of cases in the district court. They've got experience. They're very expensive. I've got judgments against people for tens of thousands of dollars that could pay, in which the court said the city's got a right to go in there and collect every piece of scrap metal and sell it as they wish in order to pass the judgment. So it does get to that point. It just it just takes a long time. How long does it take? I had a case that started when I was still in law school, my partner was handling. I think there's all the stuff about 2014, so six years. Because it would have been appealed and then we lost the person and then he had to be arrested and spent some time in jail. Disobeying the judge's order. I mean, it, I'm telling you, it was about as good as it could be. Well, I guess send out letters, see if they do something. See if we can get something going. And at, least, or at least put in there that if they can't get rid of it, let the city know we'll make arrangements to get rid of it. Yeah, at least we can work with them. Right. Okay, okay what about the, is uh, Ruben still taking care of the weeds? It's supposed to be. You mean like the mowing letters yeah. and stuff? Yeah, those got sent out this week. We sent out some more. Uh, I think he said it was out this week. Okay, so um, we need a voting delegate for the League of Kansas Municipality. So I need you guys to tell me who you want. Roy Hanson. 
That's for me. I don't care. I mean, we only get one. You get one. Troy Hansen. Troy Hansen. I make a motion to put Troy Hansen. I second it. Oh, okay. You need a vote on it? I don't Go ahead and do your vote. Say something back here. I just wanted to talk about the residents at 406 East First. I don't know if any of you have gone by there. 406 East First. I went by right before I came here. He had cleaned up the mound of dog food. He's got the rest of the trash in a pile that still smells horrendous, and I don't know if the smell's coming out of the house or what. So I just wanted to update you on that. But I wanted to question, what do you want to do about the 11 housing violations? about that. We didn't address those in the letter. I kind of would like the city to take a position on whether it's going to enforce the housing rules, which is, and I, you can review the ordinance, but substandard living conditions, basically, whether you guys want to. Uh, and, and I don't know how many houses we're talking about. Talk about well, probably two. Oh, two right now, I think we like chapter and verse on I don't know if we're talking about because of poor living conditions as a result of monetary wealth or as a result of mental health. But you would actually be asking somebody to go into the house and make a judgment about whether somebody should be living there or not, which is above and beyond asking them to clean their trash for every person to see. So I, before I, I start to tell people that they need to buy their house because lacks certain basic human necessities. Um, I kind of want this the city's direction. Is that like saying how many people can live in the house? How many families can live in the house? That's the ordinance as well. Yeah. But it's not the minimum housing code, it's in the residential structure. So that's to do with sewage hookups, water hookups, windows, broken houses, roofs, missing. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what Joe was saying. Two dogs in the Well, I got bits and pieces of it. Well, I, I, I guess the part that I've been working with LaDonna on for the last two weeks involve uh, violations of the environmental code, such as things you see walking down the street, okay? Pile, piles of garbage, cars, high grass, that kind of thing. What has not been addressed, and I guess I want the city to uh, direct me to in the city, so chooses is whether we're going to start enforcing the minimum living, minimum housing conditions codes, which has to do more with uh, whether the house provides the basic necessities to a human being, whether it's inhabitable or not inhabitable. And we're not even talking about necessarily the structure of the house. We're talking about whether it's got water, whether uh, there are gaping holes in the house, whether um, Use an example. I dealt with a case one time where there were snakes living in the cushions of the house. I'm, I'm talking about those kinds of things, or the cushions of the couch. Uh, and, and whether that's because somebody can't afford to make those changes, or whether it's because of mental health issues, I guess before I start telling people that they can't live in their houses until they make changes, I would like the city to direct me to. But we certainly have one that sounds like that's called. I just want when somebody calls me and says, I've been told I need to move out of my house. I'll take care of me. I don't care if I'm call or email. <laughs> 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 
And, I, and, and quite candidly, I don't know what, what the municipal court judge would do. <laughs> well, as health officer, I'm telling you, I think you should enforce Okay, Doris, you said there's two houses right now Yeah. that you can think of off the top. Yeah, yeah the other one is the one she indicated that she sent the trash letter to. Um, it's also going to have issues about being livable. Right now, there's nobody in that house. They, they're, they left the house. So one of them's occupied and one of them isn't. Right. Right. Is that all that we have? Oh no, we could do a lot more. I mean, if we're going to do this, we should have just do it all at once. Yeah, it'll be done. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at once. Yeah, we'll have to do it all at I, I'd like to. I have. I can get a list. I have them compiled. Poor Ladonna. She gets emails from me every day with pictures on them. How many? How many approximately do you think we have? I bet I could come up with at least ten. Like at least have time. her get us a list and we can review them. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. That's a good idea. Yeah, Maybe he can. He can kind yeah, of I explain to us lot. the whole. Yeah. Procedure. Yeah, I think we. I mean, I think we need, need to look at them. I mean, you're you're telling somebody they're going to move out of the house. Where right. are they going to go? Out right. of the cardboard box. But there are some houses in this town that are not. Nobody's living in either that right. or that way. Now, I, don't, I wouldn't have a problem if they're not occupied. Right. right. But if, if somebody's living in it and getting by. That's a tough deal. But yeah. if they don't have any electricity, gas, yeah. and all that, that's... Uh, one part of me uh, says, yeah. if they want to live that way, you know, who am I to say they can't? The other one right. says you have these ordinances. Why do you have them if they're going to do that? I understand. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. If he wants to live that way, if he can survive in a sub-zero temperature for winter and 108 degrees summer and smell that way it smells, but what about the neighbors? The neighbors are the ones that are upset about that. Yeah, the, the abatement process and something like this is that they have to correct or repair or or remove the condition. Sometimes some of those houses, my guess, is are, are beyond correcting that area. But I think we need to do it to, I mean, yeah. we need to look at all houses, not just occupied, but unoccupied no, houses. We, we can't pick and choose. We need right. to look, we at, need all to look at all. Right. So a list of them. And well, I can sure uh, send some more emails. I'd be glad to do that. It's in the table. I can tell you the list. Yeah, if you guys can review it. Can we shoot for maybe the first meeting in October? There's some time to get the list put together. And but I was going to say, yeah, maybe. As soon as the list is out, give us time to look at the properties too. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're getting results of something. That's that's what she's saying. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Make her almost a mile. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but it did not get renewed in 2014 and it did not get renewed in 2015. So what you have there is a proposal that he's going to make for you. It's, it's stapled to the invoice book. The proposal of the service agreement. He, he's willing to go back to the original amounts and charge, um, I think it comes out to 0 0.015 per copy, which averages out to about $45 a month, which averages out about $540 a year. If, if we had had this agreement when that copier broke, everything would have been covered and we wouldn't have to pay the $768. It also covers the toner that goes with it. So I guess I'm recommending that we get the service agreement and then I need you guys to approve the, the fixing of the copier. Any idea how old that copier is? It's three years old. We got it in 2012. How much is that? It's like 48. 75 a month? It's, um, it's 40. He's doing it off 3,000 copies because that's about what average we use. So it's about $45 a month. So about $540 a year. And then he gives you an example. If, if we go over 3,000, then he's going to still bill you at the same, same price as the 3,000. So then he gives you an example if we had gone over and then he explains that this would have been covered underneath that agreement. And they'll come out and maintenance it every month and clean it. For that $45. For that $45, that's all included. It's the, um, the toner, the labor, the parts, the drums, the toner, anything except for paper and staples. Well, I'd say we'll probably have to go back and put on the registered check for the $268.94. Now that's too much. Okay, $168.94. <laughs> I'll make a motion to allow Donna to go ahead with that $45 to pay the Thank you. Starting for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. And then there is also the addition expenditures, which are over purchasing limits. That was this one. I put it in. Oh, okay. That was it. That was this one. Did Ruben give you the sewer pond stuff? He did not. I just had a note on my desk saying that he wanted to be added to the minutes. Both of the bubblers went out on the sewer ponds yesterday. We had one in stock, so we replaced the one. Ruben contacted me this morning. Of course, my first question was, is Kenneth wait for the meeting tonight? And his response was no. The bubblers are a little over $500 a piece. I told him to order three of them because we need to put one in the pond to get it back up to where it is, and then that way, if they both fail again, we have two replacements. So, I need a motion to approve that purchase. So moved. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries forward. matters of non-elected personnel potential hires to include council mayor and the city attorney. So moved. Second. Ready for the discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Executive session discuss matters of non-elected personnel possible hire for 15 minutes to Second. include council and Mayor and attorney. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Uh, electric department. One FYI and one resignation. Justin resigned uh, as of last Tuesday. Uh, his last day will be next Tuesday. And uh, I have gotten with the clerk and we put an ad out in the area papers and one in the KMU. We chose not to put one in the Hutch News. It was pretty pricey. 
So the ones we put it in go to Great Bend, Pratt, Medicine Lawns, around close. I've already had uh, two calls. In fact, I'm going to visit with a kid in the morning that's uh, about done with line school in Pratt. He's supposed to be out in four noon. I talked to one this afternoon, so I don't know any more than that at this point. You know, when we get to that point, we'll let them fill out application. I want to quiz them kind of hard before I do. I want to make sure we have somebody that's not going to be here six months and escape. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be a little choosy about who I recommend to you. Uh, the other thing is the mulch is in the park. Kids can slide down the slide with their leisure. So, other than that, I don't have anything unless you got a question. What was the, I think I asked you, the generator or the air compressor? You got it back. 1750. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I went and got it uh, last Friday. Were they able to repair it then? Yes. Awesome. Yes, they were. Yeah. It's back in and running. Okay. He said the rings and the whole inside of it look good. They just fixed the unloaders, went through a few things, uh, did a little update on it for some stuff, and I picked it up. So. That's that's pretty much the summer months. What they did, they um, they usually run like in the summer months. It runs from 184. The meter runs from 184 to 144. This time it jumped up to 338. So you guys can pass. This is what that is. That just shows you the reading. And then I just went in and figured the bills for like the last four months. But that'll show you what they used throughout the whole. that's running constantly that you can take care of or see the problem or know that it's happening as to something that's buried underground that you have no clue underneath of a house, that's a different problem. That's how I feel about it.
Well, it was called it was a toilet that kept it was constantly running. I guess it's something that 
if it happens, they need to bring it to us, and we decide like we just did. I mean, it doesn't happen. It's happened what, twice this year. Uh, uh, it's happened once since I've been on the city council. I can remember several years. We done a one on a school. Um, help me out for a minute. We had one. Well, I said in every meeting, January, February, and March, and I don't recall but one. We had the Scots, school. we had the school. The Scots this was one. six years old. Uh, I replaced the water line six, seven years ago. Well, I understand uh, that, but I'm saying how many do we, we have We had one when we started the rest of it. Uh, there's been several of them since I've been on council. But we don't have that many of them every year. Right. I would say, if you don't mind, that if you go to automated meter reading, you'll, you'll catch, catch these. Right away. Where now, I read the meter that where they live, and we didn't find it until the 15th. It right. never came to the top of the ground. They had no way of knowing. They had That's no way of knowing. The grass wasn't even really any greener than it normally would have been. You know, it was just one of them kind of slap in the face deals that it went down or somewhere, it didn't show up. But but that's one of the advantages if you do go ahead with the automated meter reading, that we'll be able to catch those. You know, they'll you know, whether you take and drive once a week or what you do until the time that we maybe get updated far enough that that signal comes into the office where you can see it and it probes it all the time, it will at least give us an advantage to catch them and maybe not have these kind of problems. So but without doing that, we only read them once a month, you know. So. Well, I'll make a motion that we split the cost.